At the height of competitive gaming, every millisecond counts. Mere seconds can mean the difference between coming out of a 1v1 on top or getting got. Rapid Trigger Keyboards are the latest innovation in keyboard technology, promising to dramatically reduce input delay, which can be especially useful in fast-paced shooters and rhythm games. Naturally, with the prospect of shaving even more milliseconds off a gamer's input time, we wanted to figure out with certainty what kind of an edge Rapid Trigger Keyboards actually offer. After some investigating and testing, we found that the release latency on modern Rapid Trigger keyboards is already so low that measuring the small differences between them no longer adds meaningful value. Every Rapid Trigger keyboard we tested, minus one outlier, measured between one millisecond and 18 milliseconds of release latency. To put that into perspective, that's smaller than the difference in reaction times between Olympic sprinters. So what actually is Rapid Trigger? It's a relatively recently keyboard advancement that leverages newer sensor technologies, including Hall Effect, Analog Optical, TMR, and inductive switches, so that they can be even faster and more sensitive. In keyboards with standard mechanical switches, a key is actuated once it's pressed past a set actuation point, and released when it's moved above a fixed reset point. That means you have to wait for a key to fully depress past the reset point before you can make another input. On the other hand, an adjustable actuation keyboard tracks the position of each key throughout its vertical movement, allowing for a dynamic actuation point and a dynamic reset point. In practice, that means it doesn't matter how deeply you press a key on a rapid trigger keyboard, and it allows you to reactuate with very little travel. As soon as your finger begins moving upward, you can press the key again without releasing fully. Rapid Trigger is useful for reducing release latency and reducing the time between quickly repeating inputs. That makes it easier to get the best input chain possible and generally makes these keyboards a better option for those who need critically low latency, like professional or competitive gamers. Knowing this, we set out to create a brand new test to measure Rapid Trigger latency. But our experimentation quickly revealed that Rapid Trigger latency is directly correlated with key release latency something that we already measure in our reviews. Key release latency here refers to the time between when a key is released at the bottom of its travel and when the computer receives the information. Rapid trigger latency, meanwhile, is that same time difference, but starting from the middle of the key travel. We put together a little experiment to see if that mid-travel release latency differed at all from full travel release latency. To do that, we measured the rapid trigger latency of the Wooting 60HE, the Keychron Q1HE, and the Geonworks Venom 60HE. We chose these three because the Wooting acts as a sort of reference, being the first keyboard to make use of Rapid Trigger. The Keychron is a more recent model, and the Geonworks was the highest performing keyboard for multi-key latency that we'd tested at the time of the experiment. We could then compare their Rapid Trigger latency to their key release latency. We found that all three of these keyboards had a latency of less than 10 milliseconds. That's an excellent result, even among high-end gaming keyboards. The other takeaway is that the rapid trigger latency of each was generally very close to the key release latency. While we know this is a small-scale experiment, we concluded that there isn't a meaningful difference between these two metrics. Beyond that, the difference in latency between these keyboards is so small that it arguably doesn't even matter. You'll have incredibly low latency no matter which rapid trigger keyboard you go with. To put the latency differences of rapid trigger keyboards into perspective, let's run a little thought experiment. Cutting out some variables and assuming factors like PC and monitor latency are equal, let's isolate gamer reaction time and keyboard latency in a hypothetical scenario. Gamer 1 has the reaction time of Usain Bolt when he set his 100 meter world record in 2009. That's 146 milliseconds out of the blocks. Gamer 1 is using the Geonworks Venom 60HE, the fastest keyboard we tested for release latency at one millisecond. Gamer number two has the reaction time of Richard Thompson, who came fifth in that same race, but had the fastest time out of the gate at 119 milliseconds. Gamer two is using the Real Force GX1, 
which is one of the worst adjustable actuation keyboards we tested for release latency at 18 milliseconds. Even with the difference in release latency between our best and worst keyboard, the biggest contributing factor to overall latency in our hypothetical scenario is human reaction time. The difference in reaction times between the fastest sprinter out of the blocks in that 2009 race and the slowest is just 30 milliseconds. That's still almost twice the difference between the worst and best rapid trigger keyboards. All this to say, unless your fingers are faster than Usain Bolt, it won't be your keyboard that's holding you back while gaming. Video games, especially first person shooters as you may know, are all about reaction time. But there are a few specific scenarios and game mechanics where having a rapid trigger keyboard can be a benefit over a mechanical keyboard. In particular, rapid trigger can help with counter strafing in first person shooters by reducing the time between quick inputs. The same goes for rhythm games. Of course, our Usain Bolt comparison isn't exactly apples to apples. In video games, you're often anticipating expected actions in addition to reacting to unexpected triggers, like an enemy appearing around a corner. If you're reacting to something at an unknown time, you're limited by your own raw reaction speed. But if you're planning a specific input, like jiggling around a corner, you can preload that action in your head and respond much faster. That's why rapid trigger is so effective. It can let your inputs line up more tightly with what you're already expecting on screen. But even then, reaction time is often still the biggest factor affecting latency. So unless you're an elite gamer, you likely won't see a huge benefit with rapid trigger technology. Unlike conventional mechanical keyboards, where it makes more of a difference to keep your fingers as close as possible to the release point, the point at which you press a rapid trigger keyboard doesn't really matter. So if you use a rapid trigger keyboard, the only factor you can optimize for is how fast you move your finger upward. To measure the impact of finger speed on latency, we rigged up a servo meter driven cam that hits a key twice per rotation. A Teensy development board logs the motor position at the moment the host computer receives the USB report for a key release and sends a signal to the board. With this setup, we were then able to calculate the mid-travel release delay with the known motor speeds and the difference between the recorded position and the cam load position. The results show that increasing motor speed and incidentally increasing key speed reduces latency. In other words, releasing your finger more quickly will lower latency on a rapid trigger keyboard. If you look at the trend in release latency for gaming keyboards over the last five years, they've steadily improved. Even the worst gaming keyboard released in 2025 that we've tested so far is still better than the average keyboard from just three years ago. Digging deeper, only a handful of keyboards released in 2024 and 2025 measured above 15 milliseconds of latency. And of those, all of the rapid trigger keyboards we tested measured below 10 milliseconds. What that means is, if you're concerned about latency, you can't really go wrong with any rapid trigger keyboard. There are no meaningful differences between them as far as release latency is concerned, especially for non-competitive gamers. Bottom line, if you're buying an adjustable actuation keyboard, key release latency isn't something you have to worry about. Key press latency, however, remains a reliable way to identify the lowest latency keyboards. Press timing drives outcomes more than release in virtually all gaming scenarios. If you'd like to learn more about our investigation or the changes we're making to our test bench as a result, you'll find links to the relevant articles in the description below. We'd also love to hear from you. Do you have a rapid trigger keyboard? Has it made a difference in your gaming experience? Drop a comment and let us know. Until next time, I'm Alex from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Bye.